The future of fertility could be changed by what sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction movie. Scientists are working on a method to, essentially, make lab-grown babies. It's known as IVG, or in vitro gametogenesis. The revolutionary approach would help infertile women and men have children with their own DNA. Essentially, researchers are able to reprogram a person's cells to become egg and sperm cells. The hope is those cells could then be used in IVF to create healthy babies. The technology has already been successful in mice, with some experts saying we could be just years away from using it in humans. Professor of Medical Science at Brown University, Dr Ellie Adashi, joins me tonight. Dr Ellie, thank you very much for joining me. Break it down for us. How would this science work? Well, it's quite remarkable. One would have to secure a cell from the body. Let's, to make it simple, a skin cell. And then that cell is cultured in the laboratory and manipulated in a highly sophisticated fashion uh, to become what is known as a stem cell, which is essentially a cell that can go anywhere or can become anything whatever you wish it to become. Uh, once you have at your disposal a stem cell, you can then guide it towards an endpoint that you happen to be interested in. Uh, we are discussing eggs and sperm today, but the technology is much bigger than that. Uh, we could create cells that would replace uh, missing cells, let's say, in the eye, and restore vision. Would there be any long-term differences in babies born from the cells that have been created this way, as opposed to, for example, the existing reproductive processes we know? This has yet to be applied in the context of the human being. As best we can tell, this will be just as good or just the same as the natural process. Uh, Doctor, infertility affects so many people around the world. Is it fanciful to think this could be the end of infertility? In principle, yes. Um, there may well be certain variants of infertility where we may or may not be able to overcome the circumstance. There are women, for example, with so-called Turner syndrome uh, who are born with only a single X chromosome and as a result have no eggs in their ovaries. It's not clear what the prospect would be for those individuals. Doctor, assisted reproduction methods tend to generate quite a lot of controversy. What are the ethical controversies surrounding this? Well, from where I sit, uh, I don't really see any controversy. I think uh, men and women are, deserve to be parents if that's what they choose to be. And we ought to do everything we can to make it happen for them. This has been a fascinating conversation. We certainly look forward to watching how it develops in the years to come. Ellie, thank you for your time this evening. My pleasure.